Hi and welcome. I trust that you've seen my previous two videos, one for how to read Tibetan characters and the other about how to read Tibetan syllables. And uh, yeah, now there's a third one, in, in fact, about um, how to write them out yourself by hand. So this is about transcribing Tibetan using Wiley transliteration. So using uh, Latin characters like we use for writing English for writing out the Tibetan script. It's uh, useful for uh, some software programs um, that don't take Unicode. They only maybe take text and so it's an uh, easy way and then you can transport between different files and whatnot. Or even if you're just taking notes and you're not comfortable writing the letters uh, uh, in the Tibetan script yet, then it's another way to spell or to tr practice your spelling using Wiley. So let's have a look here. I'm just going to use exactly the same conversation that I used in the video about uh, how to open a conversation in Tibetan, since that one seems to be a popular one. So we'll just have a look at the first sentence here. So if you remember from how to spell, <laughs> you know that the you have a prefix, pa. So that in Wiley is pa. Then you have k. Oh, sorry, now I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have the reverse problem. I'm used to typing in Unicode. OK, so I will try to be strict with myself and only type in Wiley. So b. Then you have the ka is k, the r underneath becomes a r. And then it needs to have the vowel sound. So if there's no vowel marker, that means the vowel is a. So b k r a. And as you know from pronunciation, that's pronounced ta. Ta becomes, it sounds more like t r a. For, uh, you know, as the language evolved, the pronunciation changed. Next we have she, so sh, oops, F S H is the Wiley way of writing sh, sha. Then we have our vowel comes, this is the root letter here because it has a vowel on it, so the root letter gets the vowel right away, she. And then you have a suffix, s, she, which is silent, so ta, she, ta, she. Next, we have de. You have a prefix pa. So that's a b, which is silent. Then d. And you have the vowel sign dengbu e. So de. The b is silent, so de. Ta, shi, de. And the next syllable you have is lek. So you have a la, which is l. The e vowel sign on it, dengbu. Le, then G, uh, oops, sorry, I'm typing the other way, L-E-G, and then S is the silent second suffix in this case. Ta, shi, de, le. And in Wiley, if you want it to do a she at the end, you can use a slash like that. Ta, shi, de, le. So when you see it in Wiley, it's a little bit easier maybe to guess the pronunciation. It's maybe not, it's not perfect though, but it can help you on the way to getting better at recognizing and spelling. So let's just do it once through with the pronunciation. So, pau ka rata ta sha gigu shi sa shi pau da dengbu te la dengbu le ka sa lek. That's how you would spell it to a Tibetan person. And to an English person, you can spell it B-K-R-A-S-H-I-S-B-D-E-L-E-G-S -E slash. So let's try the next one. We have a head letter SA, and under that is the GA. So we're just going to put that next. And then U. Shabtyu ku. Next syllable is zuk. So the ga, oops, sorry, the ga in front is silent. 
Then you have a, a za, shabchu, zu, ga, sa, zuk. So you see the G at the beginning and the S at the end are both silent. All you hear is the zuk. So you have ku, zuk, ku, zuk, ku, zuk. Then we have the same as above. So de, b, d, e. This time we're going to use bo, bo, de, bo, de, bo. And then we have ya, oops, sorry, space before, ya, gigu, yi, oops, what happened? Ya, gigu, yi, na, yin, yin, ku, zu, de, bo, yin. And then the last we have is, you have the ba, and that's the root letter. So we have ba, we put the a ah sound after it, and then s, which is silent, s is a suffix, silent suffix. Be. Ba becomes be because the s modifies the vowel sound. So ku zu de bo yin be. So sa kata ka shabju ku. Kao za shabchu zu ga sa zuk pao ta dengu te pa naropo ya gigu yi na yin pa sa pe. And we'll put our she at the end. Ku zu debo yimbe. This is an exercise you can do with any Tibetan text now, and I encourage you to do it a lot. It's very helpful for getting good spelling habits and getting it into your brain how, how it should look. And eventually, you'll be able to type it yourself. But this is one step towards that. So, again, depo. Pao ta dengu te space pa naru po so that's po and then ya gigu yi na yin de bo yin de bo yin and the next one this one is a ta whoops again so ta in wiley is th the shabju is still tu, tu, then ka, oops, ka, sa, tuk. The s, the second suffix s is silent. Tuk, tuk, the, the g is not aggressively pronounced usually. So tuk. Next word we have has a ra on top, rago. So ra. Then we have a ja, and a drengbu is our vowel sound, so j. So when you have a rago, it doesn't affect the sound, it just makes it voiced. So che, low tone che becomes j with a ra on top. Ra, jata ja, drengbu j. And then we have a cha, oops. Cha in Wiley is ch, cha, and then e, drengbu e, tug je che, which means thank you. Literally means great compassion, big, big compassion. Tug je che. Just a quick note, honorifics, tug. Tug is often used with honorifics to do with the mind. So compassion is uh, mind or heart, I suppose, in this case. So something that you feel or think probably will have a tug in front of it if it's being honorific. So ta shabchu tu ka sa tuk ra jata ja dringbu che cha dringbu che. Yeah. And then, oh yes, we'll put our she at the end. 
Next, let's practice this one. This one is ka, so in Wiley that's K-H. And then we have a yata underneath it, a Y underneath it. Kya, ka yata kya. Then a dengbum gives you your vowel sound, dengbu ke. Ta ke. The, the ke in this case, the D sound is silent. Ke. Then we have ra. And ra is the root letter, so we put the vowel sound after that, ra. Ra. And then we have nga. Rang, which makes it rang. So it just closes with the nga sound. Ra, nga, rang. Rang. And that's another just to note, you never have two vowel sounds in one syllable. That's impossible because that would be another vowel sound. So it's one way to know if you're writing it correctly. Now we have debo again. De, oops, bo, yin, be. De, again, ba is the root letter, so be. Keran debo yin be. Kaya ta kya denbu ke ta ke. Rang a rang. Pao ta denbu te. Ba naro po. Ya gigu yi na yin. Ba sa pe. And then to end, we will do the last sentence here. Nga. So in Wiley, that's just nga, and that's a root letter, so you need your vowel, nga, a root letter by itself. Then you have de, oops, de, bo, sorry, bo, yin. Nga, de, bo, yin. Nga, pa, o, ta, deng, bu, de, pa, na, ro, bo, Ya gigu yi na yin. Nga debo yin. So I hope you found this helpful. I will do similar videos with how to type in uh, Wiley, uh, uh, sorry, in Unicode as well. So what I would suggest is go through any video you find, any text you find. Just um, use the Wiley alphabet. I will, maybe I'll type it right here just so that you can see it all in one place. You make yourself a, make yourself a chart here. So you have ga, ka, ga, nga. Then you have cha, oops, cha, cha, ja. Nya. Da. Ta. Ta. Na. Ba. Pa. Ba. Ma. Whoops. Ma. Za. Ta. Za. Wa. Sha, sa, ah, you just use the apostrophe and the ya. I suppose you can put apostrophe a if it helps. That might be confusing. Just keep the apostrophe. That's good. Next you have ra, la, sha, sa. And finally, ha and a. So that's your Wiley alphabet. Use it in good health.